Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, February 12th, 2023. My name is Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast. We've been determined length episode number 683. I would like to enter... Uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> we would like... <laughs> <laughs> we would like to <laughs> welcome to the show built Heater. i said that in wrong accent but hi everybody <laughs> i want to make sure they emphasize that tea yep <laughs> and the flavor i've been drinking is blue blue raspberry iced tea <laughs> and process on the, on the syllable. syllable right yeah. right <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say you want to go take two, but it's too late. We're live, so oh, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I never fine. say we're a professional recording in any way, shape, or form, so that's fine. Anyways, uh, we've got this one handsome man here, uh, Gary. Why do we have this handsome man here? Well, so uh, I'll take you back, if you will, uh, in the summer of 2019. <laughs> We did an interview with a listener um, <laughs> on what we called our Trans Bear Listener episode. Uh, so T-Bear came on and we discussed episodes where we hear uh, and there over time had touched on transness in the broader um, bear community. So in the 15 years now of the podcast, we have had an evolution in our understanding of what being trans is. So true to our nature, we are very excited to come back to the topic because we have another listener that reached out with feedback on episode COL 514 that was almost four years ago, <laughs> uh, back in the summer of 2019. So uh, we're excited that um, Built a Bear has joined us today to kind of have us retouch base on some of this subject um, and get a different voice on these things. So thanks for coming on the show. Oh, it's my pleasure. Absolutely my pleasure. Yeah. Uh, so I will say this to our broader audience. Um, this is kind of as simple as it is. We got an email, we replied, and then that went back and forth. Um, and we discussed some things and we uh, did some uh, dis of the discussion in our, I think it's our most recent, what's the, what's going on from yeah, January? I was looking that up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we did kind of an edited version of the, the original email that you had sent to us. Um, and it, it was uh, very well thought out and um, came from a, a good, you know, viewpoint. And by good, I mean, like, firsthand knowledge helped explain some things. Um, and it was kind of funny because we're, we're going over it and we're reading it and we're like, okay, some of this is no offense in the archives of our mind. <laughs> so we can't quite remember <laughs> what we said when we said it. Yeah, um, right, right. But it right. was, uh, it was good that we, that we got the feedback and we're like, hey, would you be interested in coming on? And it's not that everybody who emails us, you know, is necessarily uh, looking to be a guest or has interest or, you know, it's just more about, I think, the mix of things. So, but, uh, and we've been discussing as co-hosts over the past year or two, probably, I want to say, since about the time of, of the, you know, the pandemic, um, that <laughs> revisiting topics is totally a, a possibility because we're in an ever-changing and evolving society um, and perspective and nowhere is that more true than in the case of, you know, our podcast being around for a decade and a half. Like uh, I will just caveat it this way. Anybody who's relatively new to the podcast, if you go back and listen to some of the um, first, you know, 
200 episodes roughly or so, uh, you might hear things that are very contextually confusing or you might be like, Ooh, okay. And it's like, Hey, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, nobody's perfect. We've, yeah. and we, some I of us, I, I will say definitely that I've changed my perspectives on certain things for sure. Um, so, uh, and like this topic kind of is a place where I, my, I've always been positive about it, but negative in a different way. If you get my drift. Well, I think it, it really comes down to, uh, experience, which you might also phrase as awareness. Like mm -hmm. who do you know? And what are those things? I will admit, like, I never thought of myself for the longest time. And this is sort of tangential, like, you know, as a person who could be potentially racist, um, I but I also never had persons of color in my life that, like, helped me understand that actually, yes, there are some things I've said and done in my life that are like, really not cool, or not acceptable. Um, right. And, you know, I, I never thought of myself as a person who would ever say, but I have a black friend, I can't be racist. But <laughs> I'm pretty sure like I've behaved in such a fashion and you know, so I'm, I'm going to have to own that. And I think that's a big part of like your, our personal journeys is to see where those things are, are at and what we do when it comes to those things. And I feel like um, trans existence within the bear community is something that has been always there, but uh, I don't, I'm not sure what, has been happening if there's been an intention in terms of like awareness or increased representation or people feeling more comfortable to like have the comfort of speaking their voice and their authenticity and um i don't want to say demanding a seat but like having the seat or the you know the opportunity mm -hmm. to be able to talk about that yeah absolutely I, I think it's probably all three of those things i think that there are probably more being trans is is way more um, visible today at the topic in general. Mm -hmm. And the bear community has always, in my experience, I'll speak from my experience. It's so easy to just say blah, 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 and think that people that's how it is for everyone. But I understand that it, it could have been very different for other people. But from right. my experience, the bear community has been very welcoming because it seems like the bear community is welcoming of guys of different ages and body types and ethnicities and all of those things. And so it just seemed like the natural place to go for acceptance. Mm. And um, so it's been, yeah, the bear community has been really good. And I think that the other thing is like, if, if you don't know a trans guy, it's, it's hard to get to know things about trans men, right? If, if somebody's not, you know, there kind of saying, Hey, you know, here I am and here's what's going on for me or whatever. Right. And, and I think that's a key aspect of it that um, we all have our own ignorance and then unfortunately behave in such ways because we just don't have familiarity. I think back to when I first came out back in the 90s and how I knew someone that was a drag queen and they were it was it was kind of whispered. I, I don't like saying it that way, but it was like, you know, kind of talked about sort of behind their back. And I don't think people were me doing it to be mean, but they were like, you know. Mm -hmm. They're, they're trans. And I was like, okay, like it, it never really meant anything to me one direction or another. Um, years mm -hmm. go by, they moved um, out of state to another region. We actually touched base recently, uh, but probably in uh, 2020, maybe like on Facebook because of a mutual friend. And I was like, oh my God, I am so excited to see that like you're thriving, like, and you're still living your authentic life. And, and I'm so happy about that. Um, and it really made me reflect on how um, unaware, uneducated I was. Like, I just didn't understand the challenges of the difficulty of, like, what they was their life was like as a person of color, as a trans woman who was trying to live in, in my hometown here, which I will admit has not necessarily been the most, like, supportive of environments for the broader LGBTQ community. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's, a, there's a, an inappropriate, like curiosity on my part, if I was to have a chance to talk to them and sit down and be like, if you're willing to tell me your story, I want to hear, I want to listen and, and better understand mm -hmm. because I just didn't get it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah. And, and also there was a lot of confusion, I think, um, from my experience about 
people that did drag and people that were cross dressers and people that uh, were trans. I think there was a lot of just like uh, unintentional grouping and they just kind of right. like put them all in the same pool without realizing that these are very different experiences. Absolutely. Absolutely. This, this is the kind of thing that, that fed into just heavy, heavy, heavy shame. Uh, I had when I first kind of figured out I was trans, it was mm. like, you know, Oh my God, I'm not one of those. You know, I just, I felt, I was so frustrated by it. Uh, once I figured out that I had, you know, I had a name for it and, um, because I had heard how people talked about trans people and, you know, I, I thought, you know, some pretty nasty things myself from time to time. And, you know, I just, because I wasn't educated, I didn't understand right. exactly where you're coming from. And so when I found that mirror turned around, I was like, <laughs> what, <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. And I think that's something that our community struggles with and it, and it, it used to infuriate me. And now I come from a different place of like, it's unfortunate that you don't see how you can't see. Like, I, I don't know how to best phrase that, but like, there's a, there's a point where I'm like, I, I say this a lot at work. I'm like, if you have been othered in your life, I think you can relate to individuals who have had an experience, but it may not be your experience. Right. And right. so I explained that to some of my coworkers who are, you know, uh, heteronormative and they, uh, I, I see the struggle because they don't understand how to say certain things or whatever. And I, I feel good that some of them are decent, kind people who their heart is in the right place. Cause they say things like, I realize I'm probably getting this wrong. Mm -hmm. or mm. phrases like that and i'm like at least you're aware yeah mm -hmm. like and you're willing to kind of engage in a conversation or f navigate and find your way to say the thing that you know or to change your behavior pattern and not um continue you know this other thing that you used to do yeah. or used to say right. one of my favorite things uh, favorite examples to use is that you don't know what you don't know mm -hmm. right and that's a that can become a really deep rabbit hole and so oh, yeah. like, what it, when I say that, I'm like, okay, so imagine a seeing person and a non-seeing person and they go to an art museum and the non-seeing guy says, hey, tell me what this, this painting looks like. And the guy's like, oh, it's really blue. And the non-seeing guy's like, mm, no, that's not going to work. Well, it's really vibrant. No. Right. So there's all this language that you, you don't, you don't know how to communicate with this person until you've established some kind of language, you know, that you can both agree on. Mm -hmm. So you don't know what you don't know until you know you don't know it. Try that one on. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to need a rope for that rabbit hole, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> really I, used to, I used to say that in my corporate training uh, classes to folks that – I, I interpret it in a slightly different way. This was part of my thing as being a person who developed the material, but also instructed or facilitated, I would say, I cannot hold you accountable for what you don't know. Right. It, it, so, and I feel that way just about the human experience. Mm -hmm. If, if you don't have an experience with this, then I, it, it's impractical for me to have an expectation of you. Um, it would be like, if you've never had ice cream for me to ask you to make some, like, sure, I could present you with, you know, the tools and the ingredients and maybe a recipe and you can make an attempt. But if you don't have the, the background of an experience with that, you're not sure quite what you're doing or what the end result should necessarily be. Sounds like me in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I, I think it's important that you know, we, we take that, I, I'm a big context, like person, maybe, maybe not a full 360 degree, like awareness, but something that folks have the knowledge, um, when mm -hmm. it comes to like that. So what, uh, what are the things we, we wanted to discuss is there's a couple of items we wanted to cover was like, what was it like in discovering, um, being trans because you were kind of referencing that, like, you know, uh, I think there was there's a, an aha moment of it, but also you were making reference to like shame. And, and my impression would be like a lot of us, our image of ourselves was imprinted upon us by outside forces in some fashion. Oh, very much so. So 
when I was a kid, when I was about seven, I had my first gender conversation with my mom. Mm. And um, I was headed out the door, chasing my brothers and my dad. My mom grabs me, brother, where are you going? With them. I said, no, you're not. I said, yes, I am. No, you're not. Why not? They're going to go do boy things. I don't, I don't remember where they were going. I wish I did. But I was, she says, and you can't go because you're a girl. And I said, no, 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 mom, I'm a boy. And she says, no, you're not. <laughs> you mm. know, you're, the boys have a penis like daddy. Can I say that? Yes. yes. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. We're boys, sure. you know, <laughs> like daddy, you've got a vagina like mommy, so that makes you a girl. And they're boys. And I said, well, I'll go grow one. And she pats me on the back and says, let me know how that goes. But until then, you're going to have to be okay being a tomboy. And what she gave me, knowing it, was other. So I knew in my heart, in my entire being, I wasn't a girl like my sisters. Not even close. And mom says I'm not a boy because I don't have this, you know, this other piece. And so I'm, oh, I get to be a tomboy. And that was somewhere in the middle. And that really gave me relief. And I lived in that place for a very long time. And then um, I would occasionally say something, you know, like, oh, I feel like a, like a gay guy caught in a lesbian's body, you know, occasionally. Because I, I liked guys, but I didn't like straight guys. So I, I, couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. It was like, I like guys, but I want nothing to do with straight guys. And so, uh, you know, I had crushes on all my gay friends. And I was like, this is very confusing. Mm. It was primarily with women. So I'm, I'm getting to your to answer your question. <laughs> I promise. Okay. No, 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 no. You're fine. But Take your time. As it does, Oprah changed my life. So there am I, sitting, watching TV, and I had no idea that women could transition to men. I had no clue. Right? I'd seen the... Uh, the M to F's, male to female, but I had never seen you know, a trans guy. So there on Oprah were, you know, a panel of, I think it was about five, five guys. And I was so shocked because they were just regular Joe guys. There was not a hint of anything about their prior lives. And I was like, what? Mm. <laughs> That's possible, you know? And we're talking about a, a doctor, a lawyer, um, I mean, really just average guys. And it just really shocked me. And that was it for me. <laughs> that was yeah. it for me. That the, the seed had been planted, and I couldn't stop thinking about it. And I was like, oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. That is no, that is not me. That's me. Yeah, that's mm. me. Eventually, you know, and it, it, it's like I said, I had so much shame and so much frustration built up because of all this junk I had heard, you know, growing up. And, you know, my mom and parents, you know, they were very conservative and um, was raised in the South. And, oh, yo, 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 yo. It was my inner thinking at that point was pretty ugly. Mm. So when I finally, um, made peace with it. I was in a relationship and there was a lot of emotional blackmail. You know, if you do this, then we're not going to be together. And I was like, ah, you know, and then finally I was like, bye-bye, I got to go, you know? So I did something which was really crazy. I made my decision, went to a doctor, went to, made my decision, went to a therapist. In those days you had to get letters that would approve you to see a doctor that you're okay to get on hormones. And I changed my names, my name, my gender markers, my birth certificate, and I had top surgery in 90 days. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was really nuts. It was a really nuts thing to do. Wow. I was so, it was like, once I knew it, I knew it. And I really, I did myself a major disservice by doing it that way. Um, I was really unstable for about five years. Mm. It took me a very long time to get on my feet again. But most of it was because, it, because I did it, I, I did everything really quick, but I also, I started um, <clears throat> being accepted in the world as male very quickly. 
Um, as soon as I had my top surgery, I don't think I've been called Miss since then. <laughs> um, occasionally, I get it on the phone, but uh, there was no mistaking, you know, yeah. what, what was happening. So it, for me, it was kind of like a light switch. It wasn't a transition that should take years. It was like a light switch. Today you don't. Today you do. <laughs> you know, today's wow. female. Tomorrow's male. So that was that was wild. <laughs> That it, was I, I do not recommend it. I, I do not recommend it at all. It's a process. It's supposed to be a process. It's a painful process, but it's it's supposed to be one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can see where the where the sudden quote unquote transition could be shocking both physically and emotionally. It's oh, yeah. taking that like just I I know you're, you know, yes, you're, you know, doing, you know, therapy and what have you, but you probably, you know, were just in the beginnings of understanding and wrapping your head around all of that, that what that's going to take. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, and we're just going to plow right through it. Yeah. And, and man, because it just, it surprises me only because I, I've, I've, I've known other um, trans individuals where I know that they're still going through the processes, even though they've been in transitions in different stages of their transition for, you know, years now. And it just, I, I, but, and it just, it surprises me that it was done in 90 days. It really genuinely does. Yeah. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) Talk about not knowing what you, not knowing what you don't know. Right. There was so much I had no idea about. And I, and I have to say a little piece on this, and then I'll I'll, I'll zip it up. It's <sighs> there. So gender programming. It, as soon as a baby is born, right? And this is my opinion. Okay, as soon as a baby is born, right? It's like oh, it's a girl and it's a boy, and there's all these expectations put on the skin, especially older people like us myself, right? And those days, it was you know. All these expectations. Oh, my little girl, she's going to be so smart. She's going to go to college. She's going to marry this great guy. And she's going to have a bunch of kids. And, and oh, my son, he's going to play football and he's going to do all these things. And, you know, and if you vary from that, if you're a feminine man or a masculine woman, or even if you're heterosexual and you don't want to have kids, you know, there's so much pressure there. But when you get somebody who's got some kind of gender variation in that, yeah. it's so confusing because we're taught like, you know, the, the boys are taught, oh, uh, uh, don't be a sissy or, mm-hmm. you know, all these things, you know, um, uh, and the girls are taught, oh, you know, sit with your, sit like a lady, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and all of these things. And so those are like things that you can see or think about when you think about gender programming. But there's billions of subtle things that aren't things that can be written out. They're mm. things that you don't even realize, but they're taught generation to generation to generation. Yeah. It's pretty wild. It, it's interesting hearing like how you went through this like rapid um, progress, like for mm-hmm. on, on in your own journey. I think about to me what it what it resonates with is. Um, it's not the same, but the, the parallel is like in discovering that I'm gay and, and, and coming to terms with that identity. And then, uh, as I used to say, I don't think this is the current experience for a lot of individuals, especially younger now, but there was like this, like dam bursting kind of like thing that happens and Mm -hmm. like, and it's like, there's no going back. Mm -hmm. And so you do all the things so to speak. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Or all the people. Uh, or whatever. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> right. And, and so... I say that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, and so you you have these ex- this experience. Um, wow. Like, I, I, I'm like, 90 days is, is three months. And yeah. while in some experiences or, or viewpoints, it can feel like forever. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. It, it is not. Um, even a year is not a very long time, and yet it no. can feel like it. I mean, here we are. It's already going on mid-February. <laughs> right. um, 
you know, we're nearly six weeks into the into the new year here. So, yeah, it's um, it's interesting. If you don't mind my asking roughly what time frame was this? Like how how old were you and like what decade, I guess, are we talking about when you this did was, that? I started messing around with testosterone in 2005. Uh, okay. But I officially started my legal transition in 2006. I was 36. Okay. 36. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It was, um, it was really, um, when you, when you, there's so much more to being a guy than just looking like a guy that people, mm -hmm. I think, sometimes don't realize. And there's so much more to being a guy than just not wanting to be a woman. Right. There's so much more to um, expressing yourself. It's learning how to learn, learning the things of gender programming, you know, that the that society expects from you. Right. Um, once you, you, once you are accepted in the world and you're walking through the world and everybody thinks that you were born male, your life becomes a really different place. So yeah. it, it I, and then I came out as gay. <laughs> yeah. Stacking things on top of each other. Oh, yeah. yeah. I came out as gay when I first started taking testosterone. Mmm. Remember what you felt like when you were about 16, probably? Everything was legal because I was 36. <laughs> and oh. I was oh. bonkers. Oh. And... and uh, the one thing that I'm aware of that that people have explained to me in some of their um, discussions about their their transition and their journey is that um, I don't know how else to say this. Hormones are no joke. No. Yeah. And like yeah. and and no. so changing your body's chemistry with intention because it is part of being your authentic self is a whole journey unto itself. Oh, absolutely. And, so I've 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 talked with some trans men briefly and they've talked about like they were not prepared no. <laughs> for for what m male traits happen on various fronts not just the physicality but yeah. emotional uh yeah. you know just different things you know about um how you process your thoughts and yeah. yep. what that kind of stuff is so Definitely. It's very interesting to hear you say, um, and contextually, like other people may deal with these things when they're a teenager, so they're not quite an adult, so there's a whole different landscape, and here you are later as a, you know, a, a full-fledged adult legally by age, and it's like, the sky's the limit, anything, you know, mm -hmm. is, is yeah. technically available. Everything's accessible. Yep. And in puberty, you've got people to talk to. And your parents expect you to be weird. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't expect this 35-year-old person to be like, oh, <laughs> you know, that was a fart joke. <laughs> you know, <and> you're <laughs> like, did I say that? Oh, my God, that's ridiculous, you know. But you, you catch yourself. Mm -hmm. But as far as hormones, absolutely. My shoulders are wider. My feet are bigger. Um, it, my whole body changed, you know. I, I always had narrow hips, you know, so I never had any curves to deal with. Thank God. Um, so, but but the the influence of testosterone in my brain. Funny little story. So I grew up mostly around women, mm -hmm. and so I, you know I was a good little feminist, and I really was shocked when testosterone came over my body when it came to my sex drive. Um. I was so judgmental about it. I was like, mm. you know, cause I would leave out the front door and I'm like, you look good. And bring a friend, you know, it was <laughs> out of control. I mean, out of control. I, it, yeah. So my brain was like, what is wrong with you? You're a predator. You have to stay inside, you know, and shame and shame and shame on I mean, you. Craigslist was still around at that. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> I I only say this because I might have used that a couple times. 
Okay, me too. <laughs> what? Okay, okay. For the record, pause, pause the show. I'm just gonna like pull this curtain back for a moment. For those of you that haven't been around, we had a whole segment for a very long time about Craigslist postings and like this little <laughs> silly game that where we competed with each other for like for for finding postings online. Right. So yeah, that was that was a whole. Thing. Oh, on Craigslist. That oh, was that's a too whole funny. thing. Oh yeah. God, I remember that. Yeah. I was in this short little, uh, short little video that some, uh, short little movie that someone did uh, on Craigslist. Um, I don't remember, like 2008, maybe 2007, six, somewhere around there, called "I Love Craigslist" or "I Heart Craigslist" or something like that. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Stories there. <laughs> is this something that we might find uploaded on an adult site these days? I don't or... think so. Okay. I don't think it ever went public. Uh, they ran the they ran the movie a couple of times at a, at a, the art studio um, in the city that I was living in at the time. Okay, but right. I it public, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> we I mean, all we... have, yeah, we all have those those stories those those um moments were like why did i do that oh yeah i was i was i was horny like yeah. that's that's why i did it that is why it was done and yep. here we are now yeah do i do i fully really 100 like regret it all maybe maybe not only but if my parents it, see it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I think uh, for me, there comes an evolution of like your maturity with age. And right now I'm kind of like, if if my dad was to see some shit from when I was younger, that's on him. Yeah, like right? I'm a, I'm a full fledged adult, like, like, good Lord, you know, and, and so are they. And it's like, if they find it, they find it, which yeah. given the current circumstances, they wouldn't find it. But, yeah. um, you know, it, it, it's just one of those things where I'm like, yeah, like, yeah, if it, if it, it was, it was meant to be found, it would be found. Exactly. If they were meant to find it, they would find it. Like that's just kind of the way I feel about it too. Um, I'm very curious um, about like you, because I'm, I'm going to move to the next question. That's what I'm doing. Okay, bring it on. Bring <laughs> it on. <laughs> um, so what we have is what has been your experiences so far with um, self-image coming out to family, friends, and coworkers. How has that been overall? I have been really blessed. Really, really blessed. Um, I moved away. Um, <clears throat> I grew up, I grew I was not born in the Bay Area, but I grew up in the Bay Area and I moved away and I started transition. And the majority of my family lived in the Bay Area. Uh, so I kind of did my thing and went crazy and came back once I kind of had myself together. And I think that made a big, <laughs> really big difference, honestly, because um, it, I had several of my siblings died during the process, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And um, when I, I did some moving around and I, I ended up, I moved to England and then I moved back to the States. And anyhow, um, I went to see the remaining sibling that I have. And uh, she said, you know, I thought I was going to come and really be sad that I was going to be missing my sister. But really, you know, I've discovered a brother that I didn't know I had. Mm. And I was like, my sister said that to me? You know, she's very conservative, very lovely lady, but she's very conservative. Mm -hmm. And so I was very surprised. Um, when my dad... Uh, found out, I started taking the testosterone, my voice started changing, and I was terrified to tell him. Again, he's conservative, we did, didn't have the best relationship, um, he lives across the states, and so he calls me on the phone, and you know, I'm like, hello, you know, and so we're talking, he says, honey, are you, are you sick, are you okay, and I'm like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I, I couldn't, I couldn't lie to him, you know, I was like, yeah, you need to tell him now. And so I burst into tears as I'm driving down the road. <laughs> so I get into the parking lot. He's like, what is wrong? Are you sick? Oh, my God. Tell me. Tell me. So he's scared to death. Mm -hmm. And so I tell him, and he's just quiet, absolutely quiet. And I was like, oh, my God. This is it. He's never going to talk to me again. I know it. And he says, like only my dad can say, 
well, you know, it wasn't what I thought I was going to hear when I picked up the phone to call you today. But I got to say, honey, it makes sense. And I was like, (laughs) again, I was shocked that that level of support meant the world to me, Mm -hmm. meant the absolute world to me. So I've been, like I said, very, very lucky. There are people that lose their families. It gets nasty. Yeah. Uh, Just the misunderstanding and the hate. Uh, Mm -hmm. I'm very fortunate. But for my my self-esteem, that has been a process. <laughs> that has been a process. Um, at, at first, I was really embarrassed. Oh, well, you know, I'm trying to... I'm sorry, what's that? You know, I'm trying to transfer. You know? Um, and then, you know, I started building myself up more, and I started, you know, going out, and that helped. So people were interested in chatting with me, and so I was like, hey, I'm not so bad. You know, I've got a little bit of, you know social you know skill here i can actually communicate without going you know (laughs) and um so that kind of helped me build up myself build myself up and then i moved to england Mm. that was a life changer right there in america i find things are so hyper um like hyper masculine and hyper feminine, you know, there's mm-hmm. so much pressure on men to be manly and so much mm-hmm. pressure on women to be so pretty, you know. Right. And in England, it's not that way at all. Uh, so I didn't have that you must fit in a box sensation. Mm-hmm. So that it helped me just kind of be me and get to know me and come out as me. And, and that's really where I got my feet wet. So that was the biggest, biggest piece. I can see where a, 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 I'm going to use change of scenery, but it was it's more than just a change of scenery. It was a total life change after a larger life change can give you an opportunity to have a moment of calm. Oh, yeah. A moment of just like not having, like, I agree 100%. America sucks. <laughs> I love my country, but a lot of uh, I love my country, but there's so much about our country that sucks. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 And getting away from, like you said, some of the the, the societal norms and some of the mm-hmm. societal pressures that are put on all of us, mm-hmm. even if it's just for a little while or longer, it can really help. You know give you a new perspective mm-hmm. uh i'm i mean there's a part of me that's always i've it's been years since i've traveled overseas but i've each time i've gone i've enjoyed there was a level of freedom mm-hmm. to to that because it was there wasn't this expectation mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And I yeah. think, you know, the the thing that we probably all share in some fashion is, like, your environment can dynamically give you permission, I guess, to be your authentic self in, in some fashion, especially if you find yourself in a, in a inviting or comforting or welcoming, accepting uh, area, whether it be people and or things or places. Um, mine was college. I got away and came out in like my freshman year of college. I had been struggling with my identity and determined that really quickly uh, into my freshman year. But I was also notably in an environment around other people who were being the authentic selves. And we were all kind of like floundering and figuring it all out because we're all in our like late teens, early twenties kind of era. Um, Mm -hmm. But that like distance from home, quote unquote, I think, can can really have a, a certain kind of effect that you find like, oh, now I can do this or that or, or whatever. So I can understand yeah. where you were like, um, I'm in a whole other place. And because the societal structural concepts or the norms are different, that you would be like, this is much more comfortable because I don't mm-hmm. feel this like uh, potentially unintended pressure mm-hmm. right, to present myself a certain way yeah yeah it it was really interesting in the beginning like the first year i felt 
I, I felt so uncomfortable just being in a group of guys, like even at work, because I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to say something really stupid any second. And they're going to realize, you know, that I'm a fraud. You know, that's how, mm. you know, so I was like, you know, I didn't say anything. I was like, mm. and I did a lot of watching and, and those sorts of things. And it wasn't until I could project the confidence that I started getting confidence back from other people. You know what I mean? So it's like if I if I came out as trans, you know, it, and I and I did it confidently, people were like, oh, you know, OK, whatever. I moved on. But if I was like, oh, I'm really sorry to have to tell you this, but, you know, mm, oh, mm, I'm a trans guy. Then it was like you were an open target. You know, they, mm. they you know, felt like they had the you know, opportunity to just barge right in there and ask you all kinds of invasive questions and, and whatnot. But if I was like, you know cool and collected and, and confident it really made a very different uh starting point and sometimes you have to just fake it till you make it fair so true yeah i mean I, i've i felt that way over the years like i i've talked about before how i've had like several coming outs and like the first one was just like coming out to myself and then like that was a journey of a couple of years in my teens until i went to college and then i came out there when I was having um, very much like a mental health crisis moment uh, because I just was, I had so many things going on in my head that I just couldn't be well thought and organized um, into who I was. And then when I figured that out and then like another seven years later, I came out again, but that time I considered a coming out to the bear community because I'd struggled with my identity for seven years and being a gay man, so to speak, mm -hmm. because I didn't, I wasn't what was around me. I wasn't, you know, a twink. I wasn't, um, a, I didn't have a beach bod. You know what I mean? Like, there were, I, I just wasn't a part of that culture that, you know, I just wasn't going to turn myself into a muscle uh, jock kind of dude or be, you know, a, a um, you know, a, a Madonna boy or whatever. Like, it just, it just wasn't going to happen. And yeah. so... I kind of was aware that there were uh, now looking back on it, I would now say that I wasn't aware that there were hyper masculine gay men um, mm -hmm. that were being represented through the bear community. But that's kind of what I got drawn to. Cause I quickly realized I was like, that's attractive. Like <laughs> that gets, that gets my blood flowing. I want to, mm -hmm. I want to, I want to do that, be that whatever. Um, yeah. And then, you know, went through a journey of my own in, in terms of like in the early years of, coming to the bear community because then it was a matter of like i i regret to say the 90s into the aughts was a whole like everyone was cloning themselves in some fashion oh yeah because, right. you know it was jeans and flannels and um you know the epitome of of this masculine representation right. tight abercrombie and fit shirts yeah, and we, you know, and and I look back on it, and I'm kind of like, why were we silly? And I'm so proud of like that the community's kind of moved yeah. outside yes. of that. I'm not going to say it's left it behind, <laughs> no, <it has> not. <laughs> <laughs> but but there's definitely been more understanding of like lots of differentiation and how um, some members of the bear community are queer, and some members of the bear community are asexual, and some members of the bear community are trans, and some of them. Mm -hmm are you know uh dragon retainers and like right. you know it's just the more and more and more and more has been the the representation um and it, and it's intriguing because now i see uh even more development or acceptance in terms of like body positivity mm -hmm. and how <clears throat> some guys are are big physically and so they may not be you know very hairy per se um but they're still a part of the community uh, mm -hmm. and and so that's been a whole development as well so that that brings up an interesting point about like how has it been for you in terms of like your experience with the bear community and and that identity and uh your journey <laughs> well it it depends on where i live mm. um when I moved, I, so I'm very fortunate to have facial hair and I'm fuzzy everywhere. Uh, so I don't, I, I never get questioned and I have to tell people. And then often they'll say, well, you, 
oh, you, honey, I got to tell you, you're going to make an ugly woman. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Been there, done that. And that was actually really cute. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when I, I moved back from England, I moved to San Francisco. Loved San Francisco. Um, I First time I'd lived that far north. And um, I met some really nice guys, some really attractive nice guys. And um, when I first got, I'll take no, no, another story. I'm full of stories. Oh, that's fine. So Good I go to this bar, I will not name it, on the couch room. And um, I'm having a beer and whatnot, and there's this really cute bartender. And I'm like, mm. you know, so I'm chatting him up and. You know, yada, 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 hey, you want to go out, blah, 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 well, maybe, maybe, maybe. I'm like, well, you know, maybe, you know, so I'm hitting on him. And, you know, he's just kind of, he's not, he's a little Teflonish, you know. I just, you know. So mm-hmm. I was like, hey, here's my number. You want to call me, call me, whatever, All right? And I said, and I'm a trans guy. He says, I know. And I was like, all righty then. Okay. No problem. Hey, I'm not into every guy. I don't expect every guy to be into me. You know, so I'm cool. So a couple of months later, um, I start meeting people, uh, meeting some new guys, um, hanging out with some some pretty handsome guys, the, the, the A-list guys, right? And, I, you know, we're chatting. And I just, I could care less socially where they're ranked, right? I was not aware <laughs> of what was happening, right? Because right. I, I just don't really care. That same bartender says, hey, my boyfriend and I are going to have a sex party. You want to come and maybe invite some of your friends? I was like, he's like, here's my number. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I was, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh-uh. I was so annoyed, you know? Uh-uh. So I was, I'm good enough now that I've got popular friends, but it wasn't good enough before when I didn't have the popular friends. Hmm. That right there. Yeah, that's oh. just, and that that's just not trans guys. That's just guys all the way across the shitty. Board, oh yeah. You know, in in the larger cities. Well, and, and I'm glad that you bring that up. Like that, that is not a technical trans experience. Yeah. It happens to be maybe because of who you are, but that has no bearing on it. It's just that yeah. they were yeah. kind of being shitty. And I don't know yeah. if they necessarily meant to be that way. Yeah. Oh, I'm, 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 an, I'm an eternal optimist. I have hope <laughs> that sometimes people are just <laughs> fucking stupid yeah. Yeah. and they don't realize that they're being an idiot. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. when they do something like that. No. Uh, but the whole hookup culture, I think has messed up a lot of people. Mm. Um, a hookup culture has created this place of like next, 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 you right. know, more and more and more and more and more. And so people are using the hookup culture for like quantity versus quality. Right. So, and, and I think they're not really hitting these, these places of intimacy anymore. And so mm. when you're not, when you're not, I was going to say stretching that muscle, but when you're not being intimate, it's like you kind of forget how to be intimate. You know, you, you know, it gets harder and harder. And so, and and I don't mean sexual intimacy. I mean just general person intimacy. You know, friendship right. intimacy. You know, those kinds of things. And so, people have kind of started to isolate themselves away. So, in San Francisco, um, when I got there, and I was just trying to learn. This was my first time in a really big city that was predominantly gay. Right, first time. Mm-hmm. As a man, <laughs> so um, a newly out, and uh, I was um, I didn't understand anything. I didn't. I mean, about the scene, and so mm-hmm. uh, I found myself in a situation where it was like, "Oh, you're 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 a trans guy. Oh yeah, I've always wanted to believe a trans guy," and I was like, "Oh, that's nice to know." You know, and people were really aggressive in the way that they said stuff. You know, it was like, you know, oh, I've always wanted to try a trans guy. And I'm like, I'm right here, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I was, Slow down. I was like, my God, you're not like the new special sandwich that Arby's put out this week. Right? That's what it felt like. That's what it felt like. 
it was like a non-stop. You know, the guys online were like, wah, 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 wah. you know, or somebody would start a conversation with, I want to bleep your bleep. Mm. And you I don't was have like, to bleep here. You're good. <laughs> okay. You know, and I was like, oh. you know, I was astounded to hear that from gay guys. Yeah, it's so it's so telling um, that you're you know mentioning this because it is so easy for us to, for lack of a better phrase, devalue humanity into these categories. Oh yes, and then it becomes this matter of like checking off boxes. Mm -hmm. And well, yeah, I mean, you're right, Damon, and, and we've talked about this before in that there's this disconnect. Mm -hmm. between like the lust and like the the hormonal animalistic procreative aspect of mm -hmm. of of being a sexual person and just the human <laughs> like i don't right. know how stuff right yeah. like right. you know yeah. the, like um hello this we are all people we all have feelings we all have like experiences and things that we bring and so you know um yeah. you know to use as a as an example it's like not every a uh, person out there wants to be um, uh, epitomized or reduced to a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, not everyone wants to be looked upon in a certain way mm -hmm. and be like, you know, not every person with a fat ass wants to be talked about as like, you know, this voluptuous, you know, uh, piece of ass that needs to be, you know, nailed. Wow. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I, did, I did not expect to get fetishized. I, I just, right. I, I, right. I didn't expect it. I was surprised because I'd never experienced it before. And it wasn't, it's not just me. You know, I, I wish I could say, oh, you know, I was such a special, no, I wasn't. Yeah. Trans guys in general often get fetishized. And we hear some hideous stuff. Oh, it's, honey. <laughs> oh yeah i'm sure that you can relate right yeah well it is, but isn't that what's messy though is i think this is important for our audience to understand like that everybody can be fetishized in different mm -hmm. ways and it's not yeah. to negate the others right like they're Absolutely. they're all different experiences damon yes. has talked before about this not to spill tea mm -hmm. about like being a person of color people have explicitly said heinous things mm -hmm. that it's okay. like just because this like it is a checkbox for you that turns you on or whatever you have this like f fantasy in your mind or whatever. It does not mean right. that Damon is going to be willing to participate in that. That's right. That's exactly it. I, most I know you know exactly. not. Uh, <laughs> I said most of the time I'm not, if you're going to like, <laughs> like if that's going to be how you approach it, yeah. then it's, it's like the hugest of turnoffs for me personally. On the nose. Yeah. Like, and and that's been my own journey myself because I've been fetishized um, in some ways, and it really turned me against certain. It should have been against certain individuals, and instead I started interpreting it against certain groupings, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and that was unfortunate because, like I, it took me a long time to come to terms with the fact that the fact that I was fetishized in a certain way does not mean that all persons mm -hmm. like this, like, or who look like this or whatever, like will treat me this way. Mm -hmm. Right. And yet at the same time, it doesn't mean it won't ever happen again. Right. Like, like it's funny that you were talking about how, you know, Oprah was a, a moment for you because I remember for a long time, Oprah had this saying about like, sometimes you think you've dealt with something and then it comes back in another pair of pants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, like, there are times when I'm like, okay, I think I've, like, processed this and I've realized, you know, that just because I was treated this way does not mean I'm always going to be treated this way by mm -hmm. an individual. And then someone comes along and does exactly that thing. And I'm like, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, but then I have to recognize, like, oh, boo, this is about you. Yeah. Like, this is not about me. As much as I want to internalize it and go through that whole thing again, right. it's like, no, 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 no. This is about you. Like you like Absolutely. you are fetishizing me and I'm not down with that. So right. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, thanks. Some guys online are, are quick to um, destroy someone who says something that's even slightly wrong or inappropriate. So so that 
So there's education that comes around how to talk to trans guys, right? Mm -hmm. You know, thing, things that are hurtful to hear, um, you know, things that are more supportive than others. And, you know, so there, there's just some basic um, background, I think, you know, when, when learning about trans men. And uh, in the beginning, um, when a cis guy will come out like online, come out of the blue, um, there's a little bit of negotiation that needs to take place, a little conversation that needs to take place. And some trans guys get really bent out of shape. I mean, really bent out of shape um, about someone who says something they don't like. And that starts this attack, 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 attack. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really ugly. Uh, that it's really hard to, to deal with that. Um, but on the other hand, it's like, I want to um, help. I forgot where I was going with that. That's okay. It's okay. <laughs> no, but I, I think your your point is well taken, you know, that not every, oh, fetishize. one thing doesn't represent everything else. Yes, right. absolutely. Absolutely. And when it comes to fetishizing, I, I remember what it was. When it comes to fetishizing, it, it's like, it doesn't, I agree. It doesn't mean it's, it, that it's a reflection of you, right? Because it's it's like I used to think I was bad, that there was something wrong with me, that I was doing something mm -hmm. to deserve this treatment. Mm -hmm. you right. Know? And then finally I was like, screw that noise. You know, I'm not doing anything I shouldn't be doing. You know, I'm just showing up and being me. You know, and it's it's these other people. It's <laughs> exactly. And so I had to just step off. And back up and say, hey, you know, this is not about me. I totally hear what you're saying. And there are sometimes it's like when you're in that hormonal moment of serious testosterone influence and someone fetishizes, you're like, maybe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I, I think there's a, there's a time and a place. And you're right. right. Like, I agree with you. Like, you know, maybe I would be interested in this or whatever. Like, like, but this is not. Uh, common this is not all the time right. and you know you have to you have to i guess make a self-determination like how you want to navigate that and like i think there's a big thing about like okay are you being messy because mm -hmm. i don't necessarily feel like being messy mm -hmm. but right. if you're you know if you're being fun yes and not necessarily messy well then we could we, we can, can probably see. right we yeah. could probably like see what the we fun yeah and i think it's... the difference between Sorry, I think the difference between messy and fun is respect. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think that's totally I, fair. Yeah. Like, I can, I can, res if there's a respect there and an understanding there that this is, this is, like, not going to say this is going to be okay, but, like, that there's a respect, respectability that we're kind of exchanging this moment for purely hormonal sexual you know gratification mm -hmm. then cool like let's let's have the fun and then i will know hopefully before but if after yeah. that you still respect me as an individual and as a person mm -hmm. um there's a, and there's a, like a, like you said there's a really big difference there yeah a person who is fetishizing you is treating you like an object to get what they want. Only what they want. Right. Right. Yeah. Speaking of such things, so Cody in the live chat was um, asking a couple questions uh, about, kind of interested about where a lot of people are worried about what to ask trans men um, more around what's pleasurable or how to engage in sex when they do meet up. Um, and to be fair, you obviously can't speak for all trans men, but, yeah. you know. I, I, do, I do have an answer, though. And, and that's just ask the guy. What do you like? You know, because just like every other guy in the world, different people like different stuff. Some guys are tops, some guys are bottoms, some guys are sides, you know. It's, you know, some, it's not all that simple. You know, some guys, some trans guys like front penetration other trans guys want nothing to do with that. Some guys like anal. Some guys do not want anything to do with that. Mm -hmm. you know, some guys are strictly tops only, meaning that they will only penetrate someone else with whatever it is that they have, either surgery or toys or whatever. Mm -hmm. You never know what somebody, what their preference is. You mm -hmm. never know. So you, just you ask him. You just say, so 
what do you what do you like? What what would you like me to call your 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 body parts? Do you have something specific? Um, a lot of guys are hung up, get like emotionally really tr- not hung up. That's the wrong word. I apologize. Some guys are really um, triggered mm. emotionally by words like uh-huh. the p word. You know, um, it just really freaks them out if whatever you're going to do they're not going to do it anymore at that moment because you just completely turn them off right because it reminds them of their their deep emotional pain so it's like hey deep emotional pain how do you feel now oh you don't want to fool around anymore i don't know why (laughs) you know let me just press your button some more but just just ask the guy yeah I think that's fair. I, I think it's a good reminder about how we lack communication skills when it comes to being with other people, no matter what the what the the situation is. Um, right. it, it's interesting because I had um, an experience recently in which I was supremely conscious the entire time about how I was um, allowing the time and the pace to be totally set by the other party. Mm-hmm. And but that's also an interesting dynamic as we've discussed on our podcast over the years. Like if the person is more submissive in personality, letting them lead can be very challenging because if they're not aggressive in like their submissiveness or taking any lead, then it's kind of like nothing's happening. Yeah. Um, (laughs) And so like it it is, it's a dance. It's about communicating and, and asking these things. I also think that, um, men, you know, having sex with other men is co-opted, unfortunately, through that hormone like thing about how it's like, well, why do I have to communicate? Like, can't we just like get down to the down and dirty? And it's like, well, right. uh, yes. Yeah. But like, you know, it, it's just so much more fun, though, when you when you say, hey, what do you like or what do you not like? You know, mm-hmm. in some situations you can steer someone, you know this way yeah. or that way to say, well, maybe, you know, maybe something else, or, you know, yeah. but I think it's so much more fun when you can just say, what do you like? What do you like to do? Is there anything you really don't like to do? Is there anything yep. that's going to make you want to get up and leave? <laughs> you know, those yeah. are the kind of things I ask. And it doesn't have to be a hour long dialogue either. You know, it yeah. can just be, you know, a few minutes here or there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's that's the key thing that is sort of lacking is just any real understanding. But then again, I mean, we've discussed this, how things have changed over time and, you know, less and less do I think people have conversation skills. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that they can't talk, but it's but there is an art. There is a whole ebb and a flow like us having this conversation and recording this episode like like it's lobbying the topic and going back and forth, it's kind of like, you know, a, a sporting uh, event, so to speak, you know, like, like, <laughs> you know, that's something that's happening right now as we're speaking. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. It's the, it's the big game, quote unquote. Uh, so <laughs> you could tell how much we are so enthralled and right. you know, uh, dedicated to that thing that's happening because we just <laughs> completely never mentioned it all till just now. So Damon gets the most butch points apparently amongst the four of us. Because he <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm... which sport? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what's sad? I had to Google it today. I was like, what is the date for this? Because I didn't know if it was today or next week. I honestly didn't know. I was like, I was like, okay. So that's funny. Side note, I literally just found out yesterday, I just remembered yesterday or Friday that it was happening today. I just, <laughs> that's really I funny. knew it was, I knew it was in the, it was happening. I just didn't know it was happening right. so soon. And of the four of us, out of the three of us as co-hosts specifically, Jeff's the one that probably knew the best just because of the nature of his job. It was like, how could he not know? I guess is probably ah. more accurate. <laughs> Yep, I couldn't get my trainee until Wednesday because of the super bowel. Mm. Mm. Well, you know, hopefully that that doesn't uh you know cause issues for for folks and things. But anyways, that so that being said, it, it's interesting. Um, I I agree with you. I think that you know the communication is kind of a a key aspect of that. So given that you know the time frame of your um beginning hormone and, and like your, your 90 day world win, <laughs> um, experience, uh, and you've traveled and, and lived in some different places. 
when did you feel that things i don't know how else to how else to phrase this like that it you felt settled or that things kind of like the pieces came together in a way that you were um content inside and outside do you know what i mean like like mm-hmm. this is this is me and this is my place and this is my time and and you know um cuz i think all of us have that in varying ways yeah. in different aspects. I mean, I, I discovered the bear community in the late nineties, but I didn't really come to a group or anything until 99. And then probably within 18 months, maybe less than two years, I really kind of was like very quickly early on. I was like, I think I found my tribe mm-hmm. and then went from there and was very heavily involved for the the longest time in various like nonprofit stuff and charities and events and all sorts of different things. But that was my choice to like, because I'm an overachiever and glutton for punishment. I don't know how to not, <laughs> not do what that. What are talking about? <laughs> right. It, it's interesting. There's so much that happens in just life that is changing, you know, without adding in there, you know, changing your, your the way that the world perceives your gender, right? There's so, – so I grew this great beard, and I was like, yeah, and then it started turning gray. And I was like, what in the hell is going on? I did not consent to this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is an aging thing started, right? And 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 I had to start learning about aging, which had nothing to do with gender, but it was this big shift, right? Mm. Into being an older guy, you know, and and noticing how people don't notice me the way that they used to. You know, mm, uh, I'm mm. just kind of invisible, you know, and um, I've got a, a really bad back. And so, um, you know, I, I, it, I, I'm invisible, absolutely invisible to a lot of people. Um, and trying to get through that and not take that personally has been really, really difficult. So to, to answer your question about it took about five. So I'm just over 20 years in the process now. So it took me probably five to seven years to be able to say, I'm okay. I'm home in my body now. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, and probably England is where I really kind of felt myself coming all together as, Mm. as a man, as a bear, as a gay man, and kind of as a human being with a wrapper on the outside of all of that, you know, right. so all of these pieces just started, you know, coming together, but it's changed so significantly. You know, I, I was a little hurt, you know, internally over my experience in San Francisco and, um, you know, and it was just a learning experience, you know, it's just a little, you know, I, I'll say I was a little chapped. So, <laughs> <laughs> so and but now I live in in Central California, and it's a very different experience. And then the COVID happened, and then you know yada yada yada, the, the, you know, my back and blah blah blah. So now my life is really really different. So now I'm having to find other things that help me. I'm kind of having to reinvent myself again. That has nothing to do with gender. It has to do with who am I and what am I doing in my life right now as a person. Right. And I think, you know, we reinvent ourselves at different periods in our life for different reasons, right? And it's like, it, it's so cathartic, but it's like, now I'm getting to know this other part of me. And this is the, the, the podcaster, it's the, you know, the, the, this whole business thing that I'm, you know, kicking off and, and trying to do for the community. And, well, you know, I'm like, I've, I've never done these things before and, you know, I'm scared to death and I don't know what I'm doing, but, you know, I'm going to get there. <laughs> You know, one way or another, I'm going to get there. And um, so I guess there, it, it was there was not one time, you know, so it's just different times. So long answer, short question. No, and, and I think that's good. And I'm glad that you, you know, are seeing that you're in this, you know, moment of time that you're, I don't want to say like reinventing, but like, you know, you're well, going yeah. through um, some self-assessment and then making some changes uh, and pursuing new things. Speaking of which, um, the thing that we're excited about for you is you are 
joining the vast, you know, global society of podcasters. So you have this new podcast series um, that you're beginning. Uh, I believe it's called OG Transmen. Yep. Life After Transition. Uh, tell us a little bit about like what your your focus will be. Absolutely. Uh, I'm doing a series of podcasts on OG Transmen, meaning like um, – Older guys, <laughs> OG, older guy, um, <laughs> could be older guy, could be, you know, gangsta, whatever, any, any way you want to interpret it. But um, a lot of people think that transition has been completed whenever you walk through the world as male. Mm. It's not true. That is, it's just the beginning. That was just the first half. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I'm not, I'm not trying to devalue that at all because that alone is really bloody hard. It's right. really hard. But what comes after that? A lot of people don't talk about it. You don't hear, you know, because either the media will focus on the young guys and the transition part because, oh, look at this girl clip. Now looks like this boy clip. Oh, I took my first shot of testosterone clip, you know, binding surgery. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's what the media focuses on. Just this piece. There's this whole other world that comes after that. Right. That, you know, it is so much more tedious in a very different way like i said it's so much harder to be a guy than just there's so much more to it than just looking like a guy and the learning how to be a man comes after the world is is challenging you and asking you who are you and you're going who am i and you you see things like misogyny and you see these things and 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 male privilege and and you make a choice i don't i don't want to do that i don't accept that you know, and it's it's hard work. It's really hard work. So the podcast series is to talk to – it's a conversations with guys who are like 15 years and older. Some are 15, 20, and some guys are even close to 30 years about their lives and things that have happened after the physical transition. So some topics are about sex and dating. Some are about relationships and family. Some guys have kids. Um talking about you know how they deal with their kids and and how they deal with being trans with their kids and um we talk about um work what happens at work when you're trans and you start hearing things that you wouldn't normally hear or mm -hmm. I mean, it's you, you see some pretty pretty interesting things so that's happening um i am trying really hard <laughs> to get the episodes completed uh, but I, I have also taken on several other projects at the same time, so I'm moving a little slower than I'd hoped. But um, I have committed to at least one a month for sure. Nice. If I, I think that's awesome. I think from what you've just said, like you've got some really great concepts in terms of the groundwork about what – you want to achieve. I, I would say from our perspective, my, my personal experience is realize that the timetable is completely yours. Right. And I think you really conceptually are looking to present something that's tremendously valuable. And yeah. so whether or not there's like an effective locked in timetable will not matter because the audience who this is intended for will appreciate like what gets done how it gets done yeah um you know yeah. because you know this is this is the the reality of where we are you know we have kind of talked a little bit about like what is it that we're trying to do and what are we uh working towards and this is you know this episode is an example of that like let's have a conversation let's you know mm -hmm. uh have an a new individual that we haven't, you know, spoken with before, um, help us understand and, and gain some perspective. And I think that, you know, what you're looking to do is so awesome that you're like, Hey, uh, I don't really see this out there. And yeah, I think yeah. this is something that can be done and it will not only have, um, a historical context component to it, like mm -hmm. in, in time, looking back, how that will be kind of archival importance, but also for the now, that people can think about it. Cause I agree with you until you just said it. I was like, Oh, right. Yeah. I, I didn't think at all about the fact that there are people out there who have been, you know, living in their identity for 10, 15, 20, you know, 
mm-hmm. to 30 plus years and what that experience has been like, which will be very different than the current individuals who are just beginning and where they will be in the future. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it, it's interesting. I mean, trans stuff has been in the media and certainly in the news a lot. Um, there's been some, some really gross stuff out there. And um, I, I'm hoping that that lots of different types of people will listen to the podcast. I'm hoping right. that, you know, people, you know, trans people, but also non-trans people, you know, cis people. I, you know, I think it's so important because people need to understand, really, it, it, that it's not just this, you know, before and after you stick a needle in your butt, poof, you're a man. Because mm-hmm. it just just not it doesn't happen like that it's doesn't happen like that at all yeah. so um so i've also kicked off a website uh uh built to bear productions and um that website is actually it's built built to bear dash productions and that website i'm trying to put together it's still under under construction at the moment i'm hoping to have it out in another week i'm working hard on it <laughs> that is the site for trans guys and our allies to be able to go and find podcasts you know, <laughs> from from trans guys, but also you know it, other people that fit into the into the queer umbrella. So I'd love to post you guys' podcast there as well, and just Absolutely. just you know it's just a point <laughs> you know go find them over there. You know, <laughs> yeah. are you sure, Jeff? I mean. Maybe we should have a little talk about this first no. before we. I'm kidding. <laughs> because I mean, really, where can you go and say I want I, I want to go to a place where there's a bunch of queer stuff, you know, a bunch of queer podcasts? Where can I find them at? You have to go out, you look up queer, and if you're lucky in it, somebody put the proper tag in, you might find something. And then right. so I was like, well, if we could just you know kind of make this place where we can just capture you know a bunch of stuff, you know, for people that I'd like to listen to, you know, that'd be really cool. But yeah. there's also going to be, you know, uh, information pages out there for guys that are just starting who need some information. Unfortunately, a lot of the doctors still don't know how to take care of trans patients. Mm. So there's um, several doctors that are trans that have put these information pages together that say, "Here's the amount of testosterone you should be on. Here's, you know, different options. Here's where you, you could do it. There's this, you know, these different options. Here are the tests that you want to tell your your care provider to do to make sure that you're not going to make yourself ill, you know, that you have to print that stuff out, take it to your doctor and say, here's how to take care of me. That still right. happens today. So I want to get the, all that kind of information in one place, but also do some fun stuff, like do, do some uh, product reviews. <laughs> so I've, product. Am, am I allowed to mention company names? Sure. I mean, they, something sure. they're not, right, they're not sponsored they're not sponsoring us, but that isn't to say we wouldn't entertain such a thing in the future. <laughs> I'm intrigued by the concept of product because I'm like, so are we talking about like the latest Apple phone? What are going to be? Or are we <laughs> things, talking about things that are translated? So like you know oh, like okay. toys, you know like I, I I did write to Oxballs, and I wrote to Mister S, and I did write to uh, Good Vibrations. I wrote to oh. another company called Rodeo. They do they do some really cool uh, trans guy clothing. Mm. Uh, uh, and so, you know, at various places, so, you know, so we can uh, unveil it, talk about it, you know, show it off, Di- mm-hmm. oh, well, maybe not demonstrate, depending on what you're at, what yeah, exactly. you're looking at, mm-hmm. but, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. but I, I, I love the idea. I love the concept of a resource, a, a, a destination space where they can, where people who either may have questions are just starting this like process to have a place where they will find information to hopefully guide them into the direction that they wish to go. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. There are so many, Facebook has been just a, a treasure trove. <laughs> Pandora's box. Okay. <laughs> Probably more like it. Uh, of information about groups out there for uh, trans guys. I I also, I have a a page or a group that I run on Facebook that um, is uh, it um, it bringing cis guys and trans guys together for dating. And so um, 
Yeah, that's cool. So I want to like be able to get the different groups and kind of name them there as well. It's a, a hub is kind of what I'm calling it. It's a hub of information. So cool. Nice. Nice. I've been busy. I- <laughs> well, it certainly sounds like it, um, you know, and and we're excited to, that you reached out to us and that we have this opportunity to, you know, not only learn about what your experiences have been, but to see the things that you want to bring into the world and um, do for that. I'm thinking about how I'll, I'll discuss it after we're done um, about another podcast that you if you're it's not already on your radar um it doesn't have anything to necessarily do with transness or with um queerness but it's interesting because i see some some slates parallels and i think um you might be interested to see how they've done some stuff and possibly reach out to them and uh because i get the impression um that the co-hosts are pretty receptive to like discussing some things and one of them one of them, I think, has done something a little bit kind of what you're discussing, but at a different arena. And I mm-hmm. think it would be interesting to see um, what they do because they they've done product reviews and they do um, different stuff. Uh, so, yeah, nice. I, I think that would be uh, interesting to see what that is. But yeah, like um, Jeff already spoke for Damon and I. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, it's it'd be awesome that you want to link us. I mean, and I think it would be great that this like this hub, this resource concept is like, hey, like you know. There's this podcast episode. There's this podcast episode. Um, this mm-hmm. one in particular has a whole series or does this focus or, you know, and, and try to bring some of that together to, to help, you know, individuals. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's so much information out there. So much. I'm, I'm excited to see what that will be. Uh, that being said, as we're kind of moving, I think, to closing up here, uh, I hope if you're all right with it, we'd like to have you come back at some point, um, update us and, and let us know where things are at, uh, right. you know, as, as new stuff comes about um, in that case. Any other questions from my from my co-hosts as we get ready to wrap up here? Nothing here. Thank you so much. This has been oh, great. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. I've really enjoyed it. It's really nice. I, I love being able to just. I'm a chatter. <laughs> so sometimes I get going, you know, and, uh, but I, I really appreciate it. you guys are really wonderful guys. I've really enjoyed your podcasts in the past and I look forward to seeing uh, your stuff in the future too. Yes. And, and we appreciate having you on the show as well. And uh, of course we're going to link a few of these things on our own website. Cross promotion. <laughs> <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> So with right. that, mm-hmm. I believe that's the end. Oh, plain ways to contact us. Uh, you can do that at cubsoutloud.com. We'll have a few links for you, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, you can comment on the blog. You can choose an email at cubsoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361-COL-TALK. Uh, nice way to be completely anonymous. The only thing we hear is your voice. Sometimes we like it when we hear your voice. <laughs> <laughs> you can bo- follow us on various social media outlets, such as Facebook, Twitter, and, uh, and Twitter, and YouTube. That comes out loud in the appropriate place of the URL. If you'd like to, you can join our Telegram entourage chat at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. If you would like to know when we're planning on recording these shows, you can check it out on our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You can get various accoutrements at uh, our Zazzle store, zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, we do have a... <laughs> oh, can't appear. Appear. David's no, he's trying to show mer- merchandise. Oh, <laughs> oh, I, be- oh, I believe we do. That's a little better. We do there have we a there trans... We, we do have a trans uh, consent of pride, uh, consent of my foreplay version for sure version of our consent is my foreplay shirt uh, as well as various other ones uh some of those designs were designed by smashy which you can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash smashy the bear you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash cubs out loud and get in your feeds the pre and post shows and also get the show a little bit earlier uh, if you would like to send us a donation you can send it to paypal.me slash cubs out loud and don't forget we're on pretty much any podcasting platform apple uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon, Audible, 
please rate us, review us, uh, like us there, uh, YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that gives us up in the algorithm so more people can find us. You can find me anywhere in the internet as box at box, puppy box, at box, something or other. Damon? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as theatercup79. That's T H E T R E C U B 79 on most beer related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you want the safe for work Twitter, is DMA Gamer 79. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gibber73. Um, as Damon was saying, I do have a not safe for Twitter. It is not me. It is everything else that I like that is not safe for Twitter. And that's Gibber73XXX. With that being said, uh, Bill to Bear, thank you for being our guest. Where can people get in touch uh, and follow you like online and uh, with your adventures? Uh, um, uh, we're on Facebook at uh, Bill to Bear Productions. You can do a Google search for that. You can also email if you'd like, builtobear55 at gmail.com. And uh, let's see, Facebook. Yep, yeah, uh, Facebook is a great place to kind of figure out what's what's happening. And uh, it's also fairly new kickoff recently. So um, it's it's good. Yeah. I, I, um, I have a question I'm going to ask, I think, after we close. That's Ooh. fine. That's uh, so for those of you that happen to be watching uh, on YouTube video for a, a second there, our guest did stand up because they were showing off one of their great uh, shirt designs that they've come out with. Um, so I really do suggest you go check out their online merch store. Um, we're quite flattered. I will not say that we were the reason um, that these things came about, but it is uh, we are not lost uh, in the efforts that you're taking on to do the podcast and the online merch shop and the website and all of that stuff. So we're we're very happy to to see what you're doing and making a change in the world that way. Yay. You, you know, you had to wonder where I was going with that when I stood up, didn't you? <laughs> I'm just happy to see it. <laughs> Shut up. Anyway, go ahead. I'm sweating. <laughs> Can't take these guys anywhere. Anyway, I say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now. Bye.